Hello everybody. In this video, I'm going to explain what is axial force diagram and what is axial displacement diagram. I'm using a cantilever beam example here. We have a beam AD and there are three point loads applied at point B, point C, and point D. So let's uh, think about why the location of the loading matters. You can do a test on your arm. If you apply a load on your finger, you should feel the stretch in between the finger and your elbow. It's the entire arm that's being stretched. But if you apply a load on your elbow, then you should only feel the stretch in between your shoulder and your elbow. That's why the location of the loading matters. Let's go back to this example now. In most of the structure analysis, the first step you want to do is to find out the reaction. So now let's find out the reaction first. I'm setting up a coordinate in horizontal direction. I'm assuming positive direction is pointing right hand side. If I write down the equilibrium equation in x direction, that will be r. I'm assuming r is in the positive direction. That may not be true. If that's incorrect, then we'll get a negative sign for r in the end. So what I have here is r plus p1 minus p2. P2 is pointing to the left-hand side. P3 is in the positive direction, and everything has to be balanced here. If I solve the equation here, R equals minus P1 plus P2 minus P3. If I plug in the numbers, that would be minus 3 plus 2 minus one, this is a uh, minus two. So the negative sign here means that my initial assumption is incorrect. So if I want to correct that, I'll put R equals two Newton. It should be pointing to the left-hand side. So this is my reaction. Now the next step is to solve the internal axial forces in member A, B, B, C, and C, D. To do that, I'm going to create some section cuts. So here are my section cuts. I'm creating four section cuts. For A, B portion, I'll be looking at the support and section cut A. For B, C portion, I'll be looking at the portion in between two and three. And for C, D portion, I'm looking at section cut four and point D. So if I look at the A, B portion, I know on the left hand side part, this is a this is a reaction and it's pointing to the left. It's two kilonewtons. Therefore, what is the force on the right hand side? It has to be two kilonewton as well. Right? So A B portion is pretty simple. Then let's look at the C D portion. C D portion I'll be looking at section cut four as well as point D. And there is only one point load, P3, is pointing right hand side. So CD portion, the load on the free end here is one Newton. On the left hand side, it has to be one Newton in the opposite direction. Now let's look at uh, portion BC. For this portion, I'm just looking at uh, the middle portion. So if I look at section cut three, what are the forces here? It should be the sum of P2 and P3. Right? I'm, I'm assuming right hand side is positive. So this will be P3 minus P2. The result is one minus two. This is negative one Newton. So the real loading should be one Newton and then pointing to the left hand side. That means my assumption here is incorrect. So we just need to correct that. And let's look at the left hand side. Left hand side, we have R, that's a reaction R. We have P1. Those are both in the positive direction. So that would be minus two. Plus three. 
that is one Newton. Right, so this assumption here is correct. We have one Newton compression. And on the other side, we also have one Newton in compression. Now let's plot the axial force diagram. In axial force diagram, I'm assuming this is a positive, positive is in tension, negative is in compression. AB portion, we have positive, this is two, two Newton. BC portion, we have a compression. CD portion, we have a one Newton. Okay, here is my axial force diagram. AB portion, that's positive two. BC portion, that's negative one. And CD portion is positive one. So we have tension, compression, and tension. That means when we look at the three segments individually, AB portion is being stretched. BC portion is being compressed. CD portion is being stretched. So AB and CD will become longer. BC will become shorter. Now let's do the axial displacement diagram. Now let's look at the axial displacement diagram. Let's assume all the three segments are equal lengths. So L1 equals L2 equals L3. In this case, delta AB equals P with an AB portion times L over EA. PAB is 2 Newton. So here I'll just write 2L over EA. Delta BC this is a P, B, C times L over E, A. What is P, B, C? P, B, C is minus one times L over E, A. When we plug in the forces into the delta equals P L over E, A equation, we don't really care if the force is pointing to the left or right. We need to look at if that's in compression or tension. If it's tension, then this is a positive force. If it's compression, then this is a negative force because it will make the segment shorter. Delta CD will be simply one times L over EA. Now let's look at uh, what the numbers mean here. So that AB, that BC, and that CD, those are the elongation or shortening in that segment, right? But in axial displacement diagram, we want to know the absolute displacement relatively to a fixed point, to point A. For AB portion, we know that point A doesn't move. So this is point A. In the beginning, the displacement should be zero. And in this diagram, I'm assuming positive direction is moving to the right hand side, positive is moving to the right hand side. And negative here is moving to the left hand side. Point A doesn't move, so it's zero. Point B, what's happening there? We know AB is in tension, so it's elongation from point A to point B. So point B here, this is a 2L over EA. And for BC portion, we know it becomes shorter because of the compression, right? And that uh, shortening is 1L over EA. So at point C, the value here should be just 2L over EA minus 1L over EA. 
it becomes shorter. And uh, let's look at what's happening in between point C and point D. We know point C and point D, this is a member in tension. So the CD portion is actually elongated. And that elongation is 1L over EA. So what is the displacement at point D? It should be 2L over EA minus 1L over EA plus 1L over EA. So what's happening at point D here is that uh, the first part here, we have this. This is because AB portion is being elongated. And we have this part here. This is because BC portion is being shortened. And we have third part here. This is because CD portion is being elongated. So overall, the displacement at point D is 2L over EA. It's moving to the right-hand side because this is a positive value. So that is the axial force and displacement diagram for this example. Okay, this is the end of this example. Thank you for watching.